What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to work on making our own NAS in our house off our Proxmox server. So if you're not familiar, a NAS is a network attached storage. and We're going to make a cheater NAS, but we're going to use it like it's a NAS. So we're going to make our own network share off of Proxmox and we're going to use Docker and a Samba container to do it. And it's going to be great because now you can share files across your whole internal network. And in another video we'll cover, but we'll make it so you can access it outside of your network. So let's get started on this. So a couple weeks ago, I went to Micro Center, and if you don't have a Micro Center near you, it's no big deal. You can shop anywhere that you prefer. But I found this inland 250 gig M.2 drive. It says it's twenty four dollars on the website. I think I got it for twenty. It was a Black Friday sale. Uh, it was dumb luck, but I scooped this up because on my mini PC that I run my server off of, it has a slot for it. So it worked out perfectly. It was a nice cheap drive, and I didn't have to mess with it to get the power and SATA cables run into it. So they do make these expansion cards that fit onto the motherboards as well. So like this is one of them that I have and you can see it has these ends on it. So like these are the ends that are actually on my motherboard, but they're also the same that are on the M.2 slot. So this is one that expands for SATA. Uh, here's one that gives you some USB. And then you also have, if you have like a full size, you have these cool SATA expansion cards. You can see, uh, this one gives you extra set of ports on the sides, and this would just be a slide in. It would slide into one of the PCIe tracks that are in your case. But I run a mini PC, so I really don't want to use one of these. So one of these would actually be better for me, but my M.2 equal that's the same thing. It worked out just as good, but these are other options. You might need to play with it a little bit to get power to it, to the drive, but these work really good too. So after we install that new disk that we're going to use, we actually need to make it so the VM could use it. So we're going to come into your actual Proxmox node. You're going to come to disks and you can see here's my drive and it's not set to be used. So I need to set it to be used. So I'm going to make an LVM. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to create a new volume group. It already knows because this is the only other available drive on the machine. I'm going to call it NAS. We're going to create it. After this is all done, now I have it, so now my VM can actually use this. So if I come over to my actual VM, I can come in here to add hardware. I can select a hard disk, and I can select it. And we're going to use up as much as the drive I can use, so I'm going to try to use 240. Uh, it doesn't want to use 240, so let's try 225. And it's going to use 225, and now my VM has the new hard disk. If I do that, uh, I need to open up a PuTTY session. So now that we have the hard drive added, and if I go into my console, my VM sees my new drive, it's SDB. Uh, I wiped out my partitions, I started over, so we're going to have all the same stuff when we work on this. I ended up making a whole mess, but I, I fixed it, so we're good now. So you'll see now, I just have SDB. So if I come back over here, that's my drive I'm working with, it's my 225 M.2 drive. And now if I come over here, I'm gonna run fdisk. So I'm gonna do sudo fdisk slash dev slash sdb. And when you're working with fdisk, please be very careful because if you enter the wrong disk, you might wipe out everything on the drive if you hit the wrong drive. So make sure you're working with the drive you wanna work with when you enter your fdisk command. So we're gonna use n for new partition, P for primary, one partition, and then we're going to use all the space, and we're going to enter one more time, it created it, and now we're going to use W to write it to the table, so if we look through over here in my commands, I have, we're going to use N, P to make it primary, enter one partition, you're going to hit enter until it's all done, and then you're going to use W to write to the table, and that's what I just did, so if I do LSB OK again, SDB now has a partition. So now we need to add a file type to it. So I'm going to clear this out. Uh, LSB OK. And we need to make a file type to our new partition. So we're going to do sudo mkfs.ext4 slash dev slash sdb1 because we're going to use our partition. Your drive might be something different, but mine is sdb1 because that's my partition. Enter. It's creating it. We're going to give this a second, so if while this works, we're going to come over into Portainer, and we're going to make sure this is set up. So if you don't already have your Docker set up, go back a couple videos. I have a whole video of how to set it up with Portainer. So we're going to come in here, and I actually need to add the app template. So I'm going to come back up here, 
and we're gonna come to Nova Spears right up because I want his app template. We're gonna come down. Uh, again, there's all different ones. I'm using the AMD 64 one, so that's what I'm gonna use. I'm gonna add this real quick. Uh, if you need to go through and you need any questions about this, check out my video. I have it a couple videos ago. So if I come back to app templates, so now I have all my templates. I'm gonna use Samba, and we're gonna add Samba. So Samba is good the way it is with all these default uh, settings. The one thing you might want to change is this user setting. So this is your username and password. I'm gonna leave it guest to guest, but you might want to make it something different. But this is how I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna deploy this container, and this is gonna take a couple minutes to set up. So don't worry as it says starting for a couple minutes. So let's see. We're almost done journaling. So when this is all done, we're gonna come right back. So now we're back, we can see my VM is done uh, journal in that part new file system. So if I come back over here and I run my LSVLK, we can see my drive is still as it's partitioned, everything's good, so now we're worried, ready to work with it. So for our network share, we actually need a directory in the VM that it's gonna run off of, so we can actually have a place that it'll see as a place to store its files. I know it's a lot of words, but it's gonna be something really simple. So we're gonna do make dir, and I'm gonna call it nas. You can call it whatever you want, but this is what I'm gonna do. And if you wanna follow along, so be it. It's gonna work easier for you. So now we need to actually mount our drive to this directory. So again, yours might be a little different, but this is how mine is gonna be. So it's gonna be sudo mount dev sd b1 to nas uh, let's see my mount point doesn't exist hmm. okay I had the uh, my mount point doesn't exist that's because I missed the directories before it so I cd'd into my nas drop directory and I hit pwd for the present working directory and this is my actual directory so we're going to do sudo mount dev slash sdb12 home carmine nas. And now we can see it's mounted. And I have the same commands over here, so if you need to follow along that way, no problem. I'm going to clear this out. So now we've mounted it, we have our directory. Okay, so now we're going to make it so every time that the machine restarts, it always auto mounts your drive again to your directory. So we're going to use LSBLK again, and we're going to see our drive and partition. I know we've been working with it all day, but we don't want to mess anything up. And we're going to see our UUID for it, so we use BLKID. And I work with SDB1, and over here is SDB1's UUID. So you can copy it, just highlighting it, and you might want to paste it in a notepad or something on the side so you don't lose it. Uh, I'm just going to run with it. So from there, we're going to go into sudo slash etsy slash sstab. Fstab is a program that pretty much automates the mounting of drives. And I forgot nano. So we're going to use sudo nano slash etsy slash fstab. You need to sudo it because fstab is a operations file. So you need to have super user privilege to manage it. So when I come into here, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom, your file should look something like this. If it doesn't, recheck it, make sure you typed everything right, and so you can get into the right file. So from here, it's really simple. It's going to be UUID equals, and we're going to paste in the UUID, tab slash our share, tab our file type, which was ext4, tab slash defaults, tab slash zero tab zero and I have this all in here so it's you could see it and I also have it typed out so it's a little bit easier to work with if I went a little too fast for you and then from there we're going to control X yes to save it enter so now it's set so it can always mount it so if I restart my computer ideally it'll always mount it I've never had an issue with it but if you do you know where to come back and look at it so we're actually all done with the console now. So I'm going to minimize that, make this full screen, and now we're going to be working on the, the Samba container. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make it like this so we can see both of them still. So it says it's still starting. I'm going to restart it because I actually rebooted my machine. And if I come into my environment, my containers, 
you can see my Samba container is all set up. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to duplicate and edit it because I do need to change this now so it sees my share. So I'm going to come down to volumes and I have all this information in here and this is what we're looking for right here. So we need to change the share option over here to our actual share we're using. So mine is NAS, whatever yours is you're going to set and then we're going to deploy the container. We're going to replace it it's going to go and we're going to give it a second to restart. After your container comes back up green, it might take a minute. We should be all set. So now that everything's done, I should be able to get into my new Samba share. So I'm going to open up a Windows Explorer and I'm going to come up here. We're going to do slash slash IP address of the share you made. Mine was 19 and we're going to add portainer so it sees it. And when I enter, it's going to ask for our credentials. Mine is guest guest. Yours is whatever you set it to. And here's our new share. So anywhere inside your local network, you'll be able to hit this and you can have easy access to share your files across your network. Uh, I use this several different ways. I have it for my media. So I have my Plex server and I can access it on all my different computers. And I have different file ones that I use so I can share it amongst my computers. And it, it is a game changer. So the big test to make sure everything works right is we're going to come in here and we're going to do a new folder and we're going to call it test. And it wrote. So it means we're all good. There's no permissions issue. If you have a permissions issue, go through the steps again and make sure you hit everything the right way because if you didn't, it might not have permissions. And it'll be even better. You can come in here and you should be able to see it. So if I see into my NAS, uh, it might not hit it right the second. I did this before on a test and it, it did take a little bit to see it but you will see it bounce back and it'll hit it. So it's just a nice way to test it out. So I know we covered a lot in this video, but I do think that this is a great tool to have and it's such an easy Docker container to set up. Uh, I have the write-up, I'm gonna put it in the description. I'm gonna have all the links, everything you'll need in the description. And if you have any questions, make sure you hit the chat, the comments below and I'll try to answer them as quick as I can to help you out. Um, I also wanna thank everybody for supporting the channel. This channel has grown so fast in the month that I've been making videos. I appreciate it greatly. I think the last I saw, I'm almost at 280 subscribers and so many views, and I really do appreciate it greatly. I hope you guys keep sticking around so we can keep making more videos and you guys keep watching and learning. I like sharing it. I like teaching. So I hope you guys continue to enjoy it. I'll see you in the next video.